The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Tuesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 906 a.m. Tuesday morning. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and you got markets in the red this morning by about two thirds percent. But we've given up more than that as you had markets in the positive overnight. Since about, we'll zoom in on the action on the S&Ps. You're talking about 3.30 a.m. this morning. We've given up about 45 S&P points. You were as high as 39.35. So what does that put you about? 18 points in the positive at one point. We're now 27 points in the negative right now. 38.90 in the S&Ps. NASDAQ 100, we're negative by 87 points. You see the drop off, drop off as well overnight. We're about 150 points from where we were trading at 3.30 in the morning. The Dow under 31,000. We're at 30,912. You get the Russell right now. Negative by 13 at 18.06. Crude, talk about an acceleration in both directions yesterday. Let's take that Fibonacci number off there because we basically got it all back. Crude yesterday from 85.50 down to 81.73. We're back to 85.50. That's where we ended yesterday and that's where we've been chopping around since. You jump to the gold contract. Trading down $2 at 16.75. Gold. Boy, gold, you just put gold on a long-term weekly, and you were chopping around at some pretty dicey areas for gold. You're pretty much right at the lows that we've had, whether it was the lows you back things up from July of this year. You back it up to August of last year, a low of 16.77.90 within a couple dollars of that price point. You back it up to March 29th, the week of 16.77. You back it up to earlier in March, 16.73. So you see gold just kind of teetering within where it was a couple dollars now interesting right that prior to where we are right now in gold you're talking about lows whether it was last year we had three different lows that all lined up in the 1670s that's also where you got the low two months ago 1678 we'll see if 1670s can hold right now with gold at 1675 we jump to notes and bonds and what do we have folks we got lower price and we got higher yield the 10-year right now it just don't stop man we got a 113 handle on the 10 year 113.29 you get the 30 year down more than a full point and nine ticks as we approach the beginning of a federal reserve meeting and we get an announcement tomorrow at 2 p.m eastern time we got a press conference to follow at 2 30 higher rates coming at you man the trend has not stopped right now and you just go back to the 10 year we put this thing on a daily and boy, you talk about breaking out, man. We are now breaking below where we were in June. And you're talking about a slide, folks, for the period about six to seven weeks where we have traded from a 122 handle to a 113 handle in the 10-year. You talk about an acceleration, man, in a big way. We jump over to the volatility index this morning. VIX elevated a bit as we got some negative action in the market. The VIX trading at 26.61. All right, let's jump around to some currencies before we jump around to the news of the day. Dollar index. It's pushing highs, man. 110.15 right now. And for the, for the dollar index, I'm going to remove that Fibonacci for some clarity. Higher highs, higher lows across the board, folks. The recent high you're talking about from September 7th, 110.786. Uh, and we are climbing this morning back to a 15 minute, even a five minute. Look at that acceleration, right? From overnight 109.40 to 110 and change right now. All right, let's jump around to the euro US dollar. I've been talking about the euro, been talking about the yen. And let's put that thing on a daily to see the action. And yeah, I mean, keep your eye on these channel lines, folks. Currency's running a lot right now and pretty decisive break off the top portion of that channel line. We're under parity yet again in the euro US dollar. Now I've talked about the pound US dollar as well. Pound still chopping around towards the low portion of that channel line for the pound at 114.09 and we got to jump to the dollar yen this morning dollar yen 143.68 we put that on a 15 minute action just really chopping around for most of the week right not as much volatility right now in dollar yen as it chops around between about 143 and 144 right now for the dollar yen all right let's jump around to the headlines and we got to talk about a little fed man because the fed meeting begins today all eyes will be on the announcement tomorrow 75 basis points expected 
100 basis points in play. FOMC unemployment forecast will probably be revised higher. And the headline there is that the Fed is set to reveal, quote unquote, pain coming in next stage of inflation fight. Hard not to imagine there's going to be some pain, folks, in terms of where they're going with rates and where inflation currently is right now. Uh, but this is that they've been warning in recent weeks when they published new projections for the economy, which could show a substantial rise in interest rates and unemployment ahead of the estimated price tag for reducing inflation. Uh, when you look at projections for unemployment rate set to rise again, folks, OK? Now, projected unemployment rate. For Q4 of 2022, and then is in the black here, Q4 of 2023 is in the pink, Q4 of 2024 is in the yellow, and what do you see, folks? You see rising numbers in a big way there, as we now have 4.1%, the officials seeing higher unemployment coming at you for the fourth quarter of 2024, but folks, 4.1%. That's a pretty healthy economy with unemployment at 4.1%. Now, you can make the case that's that that's not a fair representation. Maybe you want the representation of unemployment that includes people who are out of the workforce, et cetera. But nonetheless, on a historical basis, two years from right now, you're talking about a projection of 4.1%. I'm not sure that's enough to tame the inflation numbers we have going on, and that is one of the worries in this economy. The higher trajectory of interest rates is going to have a bigger impact, certainly on un unemployment. We see the unemployment rate coming up closer to 4.5% in the Fed's new forecast is what you may look for there. In June, okay, projection for unemployment rate called for a half point increase to 4.1. So those are the numbers that I just went over as of right now. Okay, what are they going to say when they come out tomorrow? Keep your eye on that one, man. The economy may be, the market may be a little freaked out if they really jack things up. But you're talking about an estimate from 4.1. Uh, some analyst, as I just mentioned, looking for that number to potentially rise to 4.5. Still 4.5, folks, okay? We got to tame 8 to 9% inflation right now. And you're talking about in two years, we might get an unemployment rising by 4.5%. Those are real jobs, man. That is real numbers. That is a, almost a full percentage point above where we're at right now in terms of unemployment, right? Think about that. That is a full percentage point, folks, of people that will be unemployed two years from now versus where they are right now. Since then, uh, monthly da data on CPI, as in they came in with the 4.1% in June. That was their estimate. But guess what? The data has not been friendly. We got 8.3% inflation since then. Uh, and yeah, they're looking for current market pricing for the terminal Fed funds rate is 4.4% is what they might think, okay, in terms of where the Fed's going to go. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting one, folks. At 3.7% in August, the unemployment rate counted 6 million Americans out of work and actively searching for a job. A rise to 4.5%, assuming no change in the size of the labor force, would amount to job losses of 1.3 million Americans who have a job today, okay, who may not have one in two years from now if that number 4.5%. If that happens, folks, uh, unfortunately... That may be what's necessary to tame the inflation tendencies going on. It's a tough deal. The market's reacting, obviously, because of that. We'll see what happens. But we got a Fed meeting starting today. And we got the S&Ps down 27 points after quite a day to the upside yesterday. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back with our man, Kevin Hicks. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P right now, negative by 30 points. NASDAQ 100, you're negative by almost 100. The Dow off 219. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hicks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, right here on Tiger TV, the TD Ameritrade Network with Fast Market. Your host, Kevin Hicks, Tom White, the team at TD Ameritrade Network. They do an outstanding job, folks. They break down the market action. They walk you through hypothetical trades every single day, usually three of them. They're always talking options, and options, folks, you're talking about defined risk. And, man, we got some volatility coming into a Fed meeting. Kevin Hanks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, day one of a two-day Fed meeting. And really, Tommy, if you think about it, this whole week is going to be about interest rates, right? I mean, Wednesday, you have the FOMC, but you also have the Bank of Japan. Now, they're not expected to do anything, but they're going to have a basically their Bank of Japan meeting. How about this? Thursday, you get Switzerland. Uh, they're expected to raise 50 basis points. You get Taiwan. They're expected to raise 12 and a half basis points, and the Bank of England is supposed to raise by 50 basis points. That's all coming up Thursday after us, Tommy. But as you know, if you're an American uh, investor, you're all about not only what Jerome Powell does in terms of moving interest rates, but how he describes that in that post uh, meeting press conference. So uh, with the tone that he took coming out of Jackson Hole, Tommy, uh, there's been a change in the power dynamic, let's put it that way, between investors and Jerome Powell. So I'm anxious to see how he describes the U.S. economy as he sees it. I think he'll have a lot of eyes and a lot of ears, to say the least, watching what he has to say at 2.30 tomorrow, let alone uh, the statement at 2 p.m. in terms of their announcement. 75 all but guaranteed, if not maybe even higher, 100 basis points in play to some degree. Uh, I was reading this morning, Kevin, talking about maybe you might get you know, a revision of some of the projections tomorrow, talking about whether it's unemployment going out forward. We're at a pretty healthy number right now. What is it, 3.5, 3.6% maybe? Some of the estimates are that they might go up to maybe 4.5 by the end of 
2024, looking for a little bit of an economic pullback. I think that number's at about 4.1% right now. But man, you go up a percentage and you're talking about, I saw one projection this morning. I mean, it's it's 1.3 million Americans. You know, you shift that number up unemployment from where we are right now to somewhere in the ballpark of 4.3, 4.5% by the end of 2024. Uh, where does that play in? To your mentality, Kevin, do you, first off, do you see that type of action maybe? And listen, we're looking forward two years. Who knows what's going to happen, man? Um, but if we do, is the market pricing some of that in already? That's where I try and get my head going, right? It's like we're at 3,800. The highs are 4,800. So the market knows something's different right now. So where where are we kind of in the estimates that we got some ways to go right now, even in a rosy scenario kind of? Tommy, I think what the Fed's trying to get a handle on right now is the U.S. economy is weakening. But how fast, how quickly is it weakening, right? I think the uh, announcement out of Ford this morning shows some real concern. You're starting to see layoffs uh, starting to creep into some of the news stories. So when I saw the news about Ford cutting their quarterly earnings, kind of a $1 billion pre-announcement, um, and, and, and the story behind that about supply costs and parts shortages and, you know, overall finished vehicles ready to sell are coming up short. The first thing I thought of, well, I wonder if this is just the first start of many people announcing this, right? How is this? I think this is an early announcement. But remember, Tommy, we're, we're about two weeks, three weeks away from the start of third quarter earnings season. So... I wonder if there's going to be pre-announcements, uh, a steady flow going into earnings. So that's what caught my eye this morning as I look at where the market is right now. I mean, uh, I, you know, I think that this is going to be bumpy, Tommy, the fall. Now, that doesn't mean we can't go up as well, but, boy, this market is set for – it seems like it's bracing for some bad news out of Jerome Powell, Tommy. And we haven't chatted uh, since FedEx on Friday, right? And pretty similar deal, man. You talk about a fall off. They come out early um, and they trade off, poof, I think, 20, 22 yeah. percent on Friday. Seems like all the surprises right now are leading to some pretty big downward trajectories for some pretty big equities out there. Uh, last earnings season was pretty strong, man, especially the big stocks out there. Apple, some of the tech stocks really performing well. There were a lot of analysts out there saying, hey, you know, as we get into the later part of this year, maybe early next year, you're going to see earnings revisions, though, as they're coming. And it seems like that might be the trend, man, as we kick things in. And as you say, September 20th, we're coming into October. Uh, we kick things off pretty soon. With that in mind, Kevin, what are you guys talking about at 12 o'clock on Fast Market today? Tommy, as you know, we are late in earnings season. So as we work our way through uh, a very thin lineup, it's really all about all the other things. But we'll look at the home builders today. Lenar is coming out with earnings tomorrow after the bell. We, we, we've got KB Homes that we'll look at. The housing sector just came out with housing starts and permits, which was a little bit of a mix of a nice beat in starts, but a pretty big miss in terms of permits. So we'll look at the housing sector and uh, we'll all, all, all things considered get ready for Costco and FedEx on Thursday. But, uh, you know, this is a very thin time for earnings. So we'll, we'll get some high profile names and look at them, Tommy. Now, a company like FedEx, for example, Kevin, so they're coming out, they pre-announced early, right? So does that, I mean, you'd think that that brings down the volatility of what's coming on their earnings when they kind of put it all out there ahead of time. Um, letting people know you still have some volatility in here, man. I got it up on the Thinkorswim platform right now. As of the close yesterday, uh, the options expiring fr Friday. Still, you're talking about about a $9 move priced into those. Uh, how do you look at something like that, you know, where you have an equity come out and they kind of give you all the bad news or, or hopefully all of it, man, if they got it out there, and then you have their earnings that follow? How do you look at an equity usually like that, Kevin? Yeah, it certainly, it certainly took some of the surprise and the volatility out of this name. The stock has moved down, as you said, significantly from where it was. It was trading, you know, about 205. Now it's 160, 162 to start the day. So, yeah, it's already made a big downside move. So I think it's just the release of more information. Uh, and, and so, yeah, it, it's tricky, Tommy. You're right. What do you do? How do you trade it when they pre-announce? There is still an expected move of about $7.80. We'll see how that plays out. Yeah, some of this is interesting, Tommy. You know, my history trading GE, they didn't usually pre-announce. 
So uh, it, it's it, it, it's certainly a different way to look at an earnings announcement. I try and imagine myself in that season. It's like, what do you put out early versus what do you save? Do you, do you throw the whole kitchen sink of everything bad out there early that you have to um, and, and save a little tidbit if possible? Um, we get to find out, man, later this week. Well, Kevin, I appreciate you taking the time, as always, on a busy morning, man. We'll be watching at 12 o'clock today, and, and we'll talk to you tomorrow morning as well. Have a great day, Tommy. Thanks for having you me too. on. Thanks so much, Kevin. Folks, tune in every trading day, Fast Market, on the TD Ameritrade Network. Your host, Kevin Hinks, Tom White. They do an outstanding job, folks. We got a volatile week going on right now, uh, and you heard it. They'll be talking about some of the home builders, and Kevin referenced it. I'll jump over as we come into uh, the break here, as we approach the opening bell. And, yeah, housing starts rise unexpectedly, though building permits drop. It seems like so often in everything going on, there's almost data for any viewpoint that you have out there, and it's who is sorting through that data the best to find out which ones are really meaningful for trends that are taking place and which ones are uh, disguising maybe the trends taking place. New construction rising 12.2% in August to 1.58 million. Permit applications though, declining to the slowest pace since mid 2020. Stay tuned folks, we'll be right back for the opening bell. of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. Jumping back to the market as we open. We get the S&Ps down about 34 points right now, trading at 38.83. And you see just from where we were overnight, folks. No, that's yesterday morning. Excuse me. Uh, right back to the 618. Now, the reason why I had this up in particular, folks, you talk about some moves right now. OK, we traded up from 3846 pre-market yesterday. Now, let me back this up a little bit, because what's so interesting here is that we are basically, OK, right back to where we were the close of Friday. OK, so you could make the case. All right. Not bad. We got a lot of volatility and you, that's a rightful case. But the swings we're getting in both directions, folks, this is why my dad talking about you can be trading this market in both directions, man. You probably want to be making most of your trades in the way that you think the market's going if you're bearish, making those bearish trades. But you talk about a pot, man. You trade from 38.46 to 39.35. What is that? 50, almost 90 points, right? Yeah, 90 points. Okay, that was like 2.2 or 2.3 percent to the upside. And then what have we done? We've dropped... 55 points, 1.3 or 1.4. So you have from yesterday morning, 2.3% up, 1.3% down. We're right back to where we started Friday action. Meanwhile, the markets are jumping 1% to 2% on a daily basis right now. All right. So keep that in mind. If you got a trade moving against you, don't be afraid to take your stops, folks. Uh, we got volatility in both directions. We are right back to the 618 as we blow, blow through it right now. Uh, well, we're not blowing through it. I shouldn't say that. 3879 right now. We're sitting within a point of it, actually. We'll see if it holds, but it doesn't look like it just yet, man, as you got these markets trading lower with the S&Ps now negative by 40 points. And keep in mind, we're negative by 40, but you were higher pre-market. We are approaching, what, 60. We're approaching 60 points from where you were trading at just at 3.30 in the morning. All right, we jump to uh, Beyond Meat. They are in the headlines this morning for some poor behavior by their COO. I thought it was the CEO at first. Okay, not as big of a deal in my opinion. COO of a public company like this, yeah, that's a big deal at all. Uh, Doug Ramsey, not exactly behaving as he should have uh, at a football game in Arkansas over the weekend. Arrested for making terroristic threats, third degree battery, and uh, he was involved in a parking garage scuffle of some degree. It seems like a car accident, little road rage. Punched through the back of the windshield, bit the owner's nose, ripping flesh on the tip. Oh, it's pretty crazy, man. Uh, and they are reacting this morning. Do you think he's talking to the CEO this morning? Do you think he talked to the CEO over the weekend? Uh, I mean, Beyond Meat, they've had some problems, man. You still pull up this company. And you're talking about a $1 billion company, folks, Beyond Meat. Now, you check out the chart, okay? Can you find a bid on that chart, man, up to 239 when they went public? I remember running those numbers, man. You know, listen to yourself sometimes, folks, when things don't make sense, right? The multiples in some of these equities, this has nothing to do with COVID or anything. This thing goes public, shoots up to 240. I remember at the time comparing the market cap of this company versus the market cap of Tyson, okay? Tyson's going to be coming out with their own fake meat, okay? There's nothing patented that's going to allow them to control that market forever and just having the distributions in place alone that Tyson has, etc. Uh, nonetheless, Tyson at 71, Beyond Meat, they're dealing with some woes. I wanted to bring it up because, man, uh, doesn't seem like somebody I would want to be trusting any of my money with that had that type of a rage. And here's the thing. When you were in that position of a publicly traded company, you should be aware that these are going to be headlines to, to disincentivize that even more, right? But that is just some crazy stuff, man. It is not okay how people act uh, nowadays. I mean, folks, living in Florida, eh, I, I just assume, and you probably should too, that if people are being crazy on the road, you don't want any part of that, man. Take a few deep breaths, okay? Realize what's important and what's not. Right. Especially if you have kids, especially if you've got kids in the car, something like that. That's allowed me to put things in greater context for sure. Uh, and in Florida, especially, I just assume everybody's got a gun. OK. And the people who are going the craziest, in my opinion, they're usually the ones that like to carry around guns more so. There's plenty of great gun owners, folks. Don't make it about that. This is real life, man. All right. I'm not going to be afraid to tell you, OK, if somebody's in there mouthing off, acting all tough in Florida, there's a very distinct chance that they have a gun to back that up, and they're just looking for an altercation, okay? This guy, I mean, he should be severely punished, lose everything in terms of his job. There's no way he should be in charge with that type of um, business decision-making ability. So, but learn from it. The one thing you can do in life 
is you learn from your mistakes. An easier way to do things, okay, is learn from other people's mistakes. And it's not a joke. You know, realize that that guy's probably a good man in certain parts of his life. And he just made a big mistake. We can all do that at times. So you bring it up. We digress a little bit. All right, let's jump to a little bit of football. Speaking of, uh, not exactly the same story, but Amazon. So talking about their, come on, get out of there, Thursday night football, record number of prime signups for a three-hour period, right? Check that out. So not only, this is what I was talking about, not only are they selling ads at $500,000 a pop, okay? Not only are they targeting those ads in a way that probably live football advertisers have never been able to target before, but what do they do? They're reaping the benefits of all the prime signups. It seems like a no-brainer in terms of how some of these companies, I mean, Amazon, I feel like Amazon's Prime, and this might be changing now, is almost like an afterthought to that company. And that if that can just facilitate people to stay part of the ecosystem, they'll make all the money up in Prime, right? So imagine competing with them when you have to make all that money back via ads. Like, for instance, you know, Fox or CBS. And that dynamic, dynamic's changing a little bit as well. But uh, I watched some of Thursday Night Football. I've been a Prime member for like 10 years, I think, now. Uh, a record number of new Prime signups over a three-hour period more uh, than during similar periods on Prime Day or other big shopping days like Black Friday. There's no incentive like live football, man. And this is the first time ever that there has been live football exclusively on a streaming platform. Yeah, Kansas City and L.A. It was a great matchup. They were broadcasting Mahomes all over the app. Uh, they're spending about a billion dollars a year to stream it exclusively. And, uh, well, yeah, they're, 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 they're out there touting it, of course, okay? Uh, but, boy, prime signups, man. If they start crushing some prime signups, and I imagine that's not going to persist in week two or week three, but that's still going to happen, okay? And everyone's 139 bucks for a year. They got 200 million subscribers, and they have 80 million active Prime video households in the U.S. So that was Thursday night. We get it again this Thursday night. Interesting to see how those games go, because usually the Thursday night games, though, uh, those are the weakest games of the slate, and that's why they're very hard to make money on. Uh, the networks will put together the weakest game, give that to Thursday night. They save the best one for Monday night. Probably Sunday night's a huge game as well. Uh etc so we'll see how it goes all right what else do we have up here peloton we'll talk a little bit of peloton they are going into the rowing machine for 3195 man these these machines they're expensive we know that they're launching a line of rowing machines now it'll be interesting to see how they can transition that to recurring now they're up 1.5 percent okay 1.3 percent now you put it on 15 minute they were a little bit higher on the open to 10 20 but boy, percentages, folks, on small numbers can be deceiving. I say it all the time. Percentages on small numbers can be deceiving because you're up eight pennies, which is almost a full percent. Okay, all you are is back to where this thing was trading out on front. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge and identity. Okay, thanks for welcome back, folks. I apologize. Studio had a big power outage there right as we came into the break. We'll kick right back into it and we'll jump in with the S&Ps. Forgive me. Uh, as we blow through now that 618, I was saying we were teetering on it. I said we blew through it, hadn't blown through it. We're 10 points below where we're at. Look at this, man. You're talking about, folks, from where we were Friday. Okay. Now, let's. I'm going to pull it up just to show you, man. We're talking about 2.3% up, 2.3% down in the span of a day as we come into a Fed meeting, man. Anytime you're getting these types of moves, folks, open your mind up to the possibility that people are very unsure how to price this market. Okay. That is something that we should all be certain for. Uh, you just go from 39, 35, okay, from 38, 46, 
I'm, I'm taking off the, the decimals. That's 89 points from 38.46. That is exactly a 2.31% move to the upside. And now what have we done? We've, we've lost 66 points about off of the high of 39.35. We're now 1.67 or 1.68% on the downside. 2.3% up, 1.68% down, man. And that's just the S&Ps. The moves might even be bigger in the NASDAQ or the Dow. Uh, okay, let's jump around and see what else we have going on. And yeah, we were talking about a little bit about Peloton, man. So Peloton... Just to finish up that conversation, okay, rowing machines is not like a bike. That's kind of what the mentality that I didn't portray, I think, well enough in that quick little snippet. Rowing machines, okay, a great, great exercise. I remember doing them in high school, man. Whew, you talk about getting an aerobic exercise with a heart rate on a rowing machine, full body workout, uh, core workout. But it's not the same as a bike in my opinion you're not going to have a lot of people that are excited to jump on a bike and do a group class like they are excuse me a, a rowing machine like a bike and if that is what peloton is sh hoping will shape up to its future look at you already gave up that that pop that it even had as peloton now negative by two tenths percent uh and you're selling it for three thousand plus bucks you know yeah you get may, may get some hardcore fans there but Enough said. Amazon shares down about 1.5% today. Let's jump around to some of those bigger stocks. Apple shares down about 2 tenths percent. Microsoft down 7 tenths. Google shares down about 1.3%. We jump over to Meta. Facebook off 1.1. Let's see how some of those airlines are trading this morning. They got quite a lift yesterday. American negative by 3 tenths percent today. Delta off a bit by about 3 tenths percent. We jump domestically. Love off one7 JetBlue, JetBlue is almost its own animal, man. They're in big trouble recently, off 1.5%. Let's see how the cruises are trading. A little volatility in both directions for the cruises. Talk about some volatility, man. Whew. Now, this thing breaks out. This is a three-year weekly encapsulates the entire COVID collapse, the rejuvenation, and then the collapse yet again. Now, check it out. That's one channel line that it broke out of mm, almost a full year ago, right? But check it out where it is right now, folks, okay? And this is where, you know, you don't have to be a brilliant statistician sometimes. And you know what? I'm even going to go like this. I mean, it's not a science, folks. It's an art. And what I'm showing you on this chart is a series of lower lows and lower highs, okay? It might not match up exactly parallel, but if you took – and activate that – oops – I'm going to activate this just to square it up a bit. Okay. I mean, you take a little linear regression where it best fits. That's probably your channel line, man. And I'd be real careful looking at these cruise ships right now with lower lows and lower highs. And Norwegian is bumping right into that portion in terms of the upside. Let's see how Carnival is doing. Yeah, and Carnival, pretty similar. Now, I already have it on them. Let's, let's see where we – let's cancel that left extension. Okay. And yeah, Carnival, a little bit of a different story there. I mean, where's the bottom portion of this channel line, right? Maybe you want to drop that down a little bit. Now, maybe your linear regression might fall there. You got Carnival kind of right in no man's land, the middle of their channel line of lower lows and lower highs. Meanwhile, Norwegian uh, looking like it could be in for a pullback to some degree. Let's see how some of the chips, chip stocks are trading. Talk about downtrends, man. AMD down a full percent right now. NVIDIA just don't stop. Down 1.3% right now. We jump over to the sum of the equities with news stories. FedEx not stopping either off 2.4%, man. Look at this thing. So FedEx, they do, as Kevin mentioned. So they have their numbers. You pull up the Analyze tab. You jump over to the Earnings tab. Their numbers are out on Thursday, I believe. Yes, Thursday. The open numbers will be out. And they have a $7.60 move priced in for that earnings event. Okay. But sometimes, if you're trading the weekly options that expire on the 23rd, knowing how much volatility is priced in for the event is obviously important. Uh, but knowing how much volatility is priced in for the instrument that you're purchasing, which would be that Friday expiration, you're talking about $8.82. Now, you could think about selling volatility, okay? And we're going to walk through it real quick, kind of the mentality I go through sometimes. You could think about saying, hey, FedEx came out with their earnings already. 
So some of the surprises are out of the bag, obviously, when this equity was just trading at 205 and you're getting it at 159 today, you're getting it $45, you're getting it, what, 22, 23% below where it was trading at just last Thursday. Okay, so maybe already a lot of that earnings volatility is out of the bag. But you got to keep in mind what you have here is you have a lot of market volatility as well. Okay, and you still have the potential for there to be news that will drive this stock on the earnings front. Okay, they came out with a material fact. And folks, that is a legal obligation. And um, I, I would say that FedEx and, and part of its planning, part of its perception planning as well, right? They're trying to figure out the best way they can release this information to do the least harm to their company's share price at the same time as fulfilling their duties as an executive officer of a publicly traded company that is mandated legally to disseminate material information to shareholders on an equal basis so that nobody has an advantage in the market. Now, we'll see what happens. Point being, I talk about maybe an $8 move throughout the week, right? And you already have earnings out of the way. Well, guess what? We're 20 minutes into the trading day, folks, and FedEx has already dropped $4.50. So be careful when you think things are a little bit too easier than they seem, as in $8 is not a lot of movement right now, because this market is still digesting some of what came out last Friday, in my opinion, as they come into their earnings on Thursday. And you have all of that volatility tomorrow. So which way do you think the market's going? We got a big day tomorrow with the Fed. And it might make sense to line up some of your equity trades with that same directional uh, bias. Stay tuned, folks. TFN One more segment. has right. just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 40 five years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. 
For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps approaching negative by 50. We're jumping to the 10-year right now. You're looking at a 10-year negative by 18 ticks at 113.25. It's not stopping right now. Those are 15-minute bars pushing lows recently. Taking a look at where we are in terms of the yield right now, the 10-year pushing 3.6%. How about the two-year pushing 3.99%, right? The one-month yield, 2.51. I mean, crazy numbers across the board. The 30-year at about 3.6% right now. Uh, pretty surprising stuff, man. How about the one-year above 4%, two-year almost at 2 at 4% itself, and then you get the 10-year sitting at about 3.6%. 3.6% the yield on the 10-year right now. We jump around to the dollar index real quick. DXY accelerates to 110.26 just in the last 15 minutes or so we jump around to some of the commodities as we finish up the program right now you get the gold contract down about five bucks at 16.72 you have silver right now down 21 cents at 19.15 how about natural gas there we go natural gas sitting at about 770 well off the highs of last week at 9 23 i'd be careful in that natural gas market folks you see what can happen you can get a pullback and man that does not mean the pain is over uh in this commodity natural gas though off a bit 769 right now it's going to be an interesting day to say the least folks fed meeting tomorrow uh we got yield spiking coming into that fed meeting in a way we haven't seen in a long time man take a look at the 30 year okay you're down to full point in 17 yeah, 4.18 ticks now. Can't keep up with how quickly this market's moving. And you talk about decisive break, folks. I talked about it when it happened, and it almost seemed like that'd be crazy if that was the case, right? Because it's such a channel, and it's such a way to bounce off that channel and trade lower. But look at what they did, man. You break through a channel line, okay, or trend line, because it's just been straight upwards forever. You break through that on the low side, you come back up and test it. I'm going to put it on three-year weekly right now. There's your test, man. August 1st. Since then, the 30-year has traded from 146, basically, to 129.14. Stay tuned, folks. Basil Chapman's up next with the Tiger Technician's Hour. Thanks so much for starting your trading day with me. Stay tuned for Basil, folks. Have a great Tuesday.